And yeah, if you missed the first part, it was this. It was a lot. It it was it was graphic. It went into too many details. And basically, just to break it down real quick, it was this fucking person reading a letter from a fan who happens to be an ex dominatrix. And it's their reason for why they think every trans woman is a CD fetishist or a AGP or. And then Mars platforms this person and has like a reasonable conversation with them. So we're going to go ahead and get into uh, is this problematic platforming? Uh, I don't know. I've saw like six minutes, like probably up to this point. Did not watch a lot of this, just enough to be like, okay, I mean, we'll see what this is all about. But I will say that this person definitely uh, tones it down a little bit coming on a trans person's feign, even though it is a uh, hateful trans person. This is a transphobic trans man right here. They are a turf, actually. Um, weird enough that you're trans and you're a turf. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and watch this. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, Mars show. And uh, yeah, if anybody is new to this channel, I have a bunch of links down below if you want to catch up to today's guest. However, if uh, you have never heard of Maritza Cummings before, you'll get to know her a bit on this episode. And as usual, I'll let Maritza introduce herself briefly. Well, that's going to be kind of hard briefly because I have a long oh, yeah. history. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I have yeah, a very absolutely. long history. I um I started off as a trans guy back in 2003 is when I transitioned. I was a fierce advocate from years 2006 till around 2014 is when I started like kind of slowing down. Um, I started my first detransitioning um, segue in 2015. I started thinking very differently from the way that I thought when I initially transitioned. And there's many reasons behind that. I believe that after you have gone through transition and lived as quote unquote a man, you start seeing that there's a lot of expectations that weren't met. And as a person with Asperger, we're very much into perfectionism and things have to be a certain way. And if they're not, then it's like, okay, I'm scrapping this. This is not good. Mm -hmm. And I felt I wasn't happy as a trans guy. I had to feel like I had to like put on this front, this like macho, you know, type of alpha person. I want to say that I will notice a lot of trans people falling into this, and it always confuses me. We'll see this with trans men and trans women. It's that they will go ahead and transition, and they'll have ext extreme pressure to perform perfectly as, like, that gender. So, you'll see a lot of trans women, they'll act hyper-feminine. They feel like everything has to be perfect. They always got to look perfect, or else they're going to be scrutinized. A lot of this is because there's a lot of fucking transphobia, right? So, being afraid of being a victim of transphobia, people will try to be the most ideal version of male or the most ideal version of female. Also, a lot of people in the community will put immense pressure on trans people to perform to the degree at which they think is acceptable. We call these people gatekeepers, right? So people that will make trans men, you have to be masculine, you can't do anything feminine. They will bully and harass and criticize these trans men who do something feminine and vice versa goes with trans women and being a little bit more masculine, which is very toxic. Cause like, come on, we're transitioning. We've never really fit in. We're fucking like, we have to transition to be the gender that we want to be. Why the fuck would you still try to be something you're not you know what i mean just be yourself fuck gender roles and all that shit if you need to take hormones to feel better act how you want don't act how you think a female acts because a female acts however a female fucking wants to and same goes for a male so that it was almost like a fear base mm -hmm. so that i could navigate life so from 2015 till recently, I've been in and out of the detransitioning and life is not linear. Sometimes it takes us a little bit to kind of settle into who we truly are. And thankfully today, I am very happy and very aligned in the woman that I was born as. Okay. Um, and like I said, um, this is genuine. This is super genuine. I honestly hope that's the case. Even though Maritza is being a hateful person, I hope that you are doing better. I hope that this is the right choice for you. 
I just want all people to feel better as themselves and do that. Please stop attacking trans people. But in all in all seriousness, I, I do hope that detransitioning has been healthy for her. Uh, if you want to check out Marissa's channel, there'll be a link down below. Um, you've been on YouTube for like, what, 10, since, 10 since years? Since 2006. Okay, 2006. Yeah. So there's a lot there. Um, and I mean, <laughs> we, you know, with your story being so long, obviously there there's plenty that we could discuss. But I'm going to focus mostly on the trans and uh, kind of your identity and, and, you know, religion and LGBT. So I guess we should start <clears throat> off um, perhaps why why originally you transitioned or a couple of reasons that you can now look at to why you think you did. Um, so if you well, feel free. Yeah, well... Since I was young, I was always in and out of my personality. Sometimes I felt masculine. Sometimes I felt feminine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to make a note. That's completely normal, and that's completely okay. Um, it's okay to feel a little bit more feminine one minute and a little more, more masculine another minute. That doesn't necessarily mean anything about your gender. Um, like, more so... If you feel some sort of dysphoria or you feel dysphoric about your birth sex, that's more so what's going to tell you if you're this or that gender or if you need a transition. But, you know, being liking being a little more feminine one day and being a little masculine the other day, like that's perfectly normal. People fluctuate. I fluctuate. You know, you just get in different moods, just get in different vibes, different seasons, different shit, you know, just do what you feel. That's how I do. Um, a lot of people use the term too spirited, but I really don't like to use that. It's just personality. You know, there are sometimes I felt like All right, too spirited is like a Native American. Um, it's almost like Native American non-binary. Here, let me look it up. Sorry, it took me so long to type. I'm typing with one hand because I have to hold my fucking mic with the other hand because the little stand for it, I got to put it back together. So whatever. All right. Two spirit or two spirit or occasionally two spirited is a modern pan Indian umbrella term used by some in the. In indigenous North Americans to describe native people in their communities who fulfill a traditional third gender or other gender variant, similar and social role in their cultures. The term all right, uh So yeah, so it's more of like a, a third gender. It's not what they were saying. All right, so yeah, so that's cool. Two spirits, a cool thing. Native Americans are very fucking cool. And yeah, we're gonna go go back with this. Like wearing makeup, and there are times that I just wanted to be a tomboy, and I think that just goes to personality. So I started bodybuilding because I wanted a. I've always been very awe about the human body, and I wanted to achieve that perfect body. Mm -hmm. And bodybuilding seemed to be that pathway. Well. I learned quickly that there were substances that you could use to help you gain a better body. I started using these substances and the substances started like to change me, not only physically, but also emotionally and mentally. So then I went to Key West at the time mm -hmm. I was with a female and we engaged in a little ceremony and stayed in an all women's resort. While I was in that women's resort, somebody asked me, are you an FTM? I had never heard of that. I was always busy with my business. So I wasn't much of a researcher online for things that weren't, you know, didn't seem important to me. So I went back home and started doing research and I was like, oh my God, that's me. Because there was a lot of things that fit. You know. It seems that I've listened to a lot of detransition stories because it is something that intrigues me. It's something that's very interesting to me. And there's a lot of them on there. They will also get a lot of attention, right? Because there's various groups that will want to use detransition and these people to push their anti-trans narrative, right? So these videos will get a lot of views and a lot of support. There's people that are more than happy to jump on a hateful and resentful detransitioner. But something I've noticed is that a lot of them will say that they heard about it from some person and looked it up and it totally clicked in. That's also just common with a lot of trans people. It's common when you find out about something. Um, me, I knew I wanted to be a woman before I knew what trans was. So I, I think that's another thing that 
you can say like if you're trying to figure out if you're transitioning for the right reason if you knew that you wanted to be the opposite gender before you knew what trans was you probably are trans but if you didn't then there might be a little bit more to look into doesn't mean that you're not trans it just means that you might want to look into shit a little bit more but me personally like I always knew I just didn't knew trans was a thing I was like I used to have dreams where it's like some magical potion turns me into the opposite sex or I switch bodies with someone or whatever and I used to think like like if that even happened like how would God feel about that because I was told that you know being gay and LGBT was fucking um was a sin and I would go to hell so I, I remember having these feelings, and then when I learned what trans was, I, I was excited, you know, because I was like, holy shit, it is a thing. It's not just something in my imagination. You know, I thought it was crazy. I thought it was just something that I just fought, and no one else has felt this. But no, so that is a good way to kind of gauge where you're at. You know, what people call dysphoria, and I think what dysphoria to me is being uncomfortable with how you see yourself being frustrated with certain things. And okay. now people get to change that. Back in the day, there's there's so many people that have had, they're not congruent with how they feel, but they didn't have the ability to change it. Mm -hmm. So basically you perceive gender dysphoria to be discomfort with certain expectations that are like based on, you know, gender, which is, you know, social construct, like what should be feminine or, or masculine? Is that how yeah, you? Yeah. yeah, because some of us, you know, like, because I went back and forth mm -hmm. a lot, you know, some of us feel like we would be more comfortable if we got to express more masculine versus more feminine because of what society tells us. Okay. Yeah. But is that, I, I'm wondering what your take is on gender dysphoria now, because in the Benjamin Boyce interview, when you detransitioned, Two years ago, last year you were transitioned as Mark. Uh, two years before right. that, on the Benjamin <laughs> Boyce, you were detransitioned. You said that there's no such thing as gender dysphoria. So is that where we're at right now today, this, though? Like, In my opinion, and I did a show not long ago regarding mm -hmm. dysphoria. Dysphoria is a, they've added the word gender to it, but dysphoria is something that everybody feels in a sense of discomfort, frustration, um, stress causes this. There's many, many different reasons. All right. So yeah, so dysphoria is a fucking term on its own, right? Gender dysphoria is just feeling dysphoric about your gender, right? That's how it works. Dysphoria, all right? A state of unease or generalized dissatisfaction with life, right? So it's not inherently something that has to do with being trans. However, when you put gender in front of it, right there, the condition of feeling one's emotional and psychological identity as male or female to be opposite of one's biological sex. I actually don't like this definition because, I mean, I don't know, maybe this is a good definition. That's literally just the same thing as, like, saying that feeling like you were born one by and born the other. I've always understood gender dysphoria to be the discomfort that that causes so feeling like you're one but that being opposite to what you were born the discomfort that that causes is gender dysphoria and obviously there's no way to change the mind to make you not want to feel that way anymore so we take hormones to alleviate this but dysphoria is present in other walks of life look, look at this right here beautiful beautiful types of dysphoria i mean this is also this is gender. This is about gender. But yeah, so even when it comes to gender, there's different types. So it doesn't make any sense to, to say that gender dysphoria doesn't exist when you, you already acknowledge that regular dysphoria exists. So obviously, if dysphoria can exist, it can exist with anything. What you disagree with is what should be done about gender dysphoria. You think that um, a life of mental anguish and suffering would be better than seeking out the medical care for your fucking dysphoria. That's why you feel just forward, you feel misaligned with the situation. So this day and age, what it used to be called gender identity disorder, they've changed it. They created this gender dysphoria. Do I believe that people feel discomfort 
of course, we all feel discomfort about many things. People feel mm -hmm. discomfort about their weight. People feel discomfort about their nose, their ear, you know, whatever it is in their body that they don't like. So, yeah. but. And, you know, I felt a lot of discomfort in my ear as a child. This is a good little, um, this is a good little example of something that can relate to something that's not gender dysphoria, but something I had to seek treatment for. I had discomfort with my ear. I had an issue. There's too much fluid in my ears and I would get a lot of earaches as a child. So what they did is they did a medical procedure where they put me under and they placed these little tubes inside my ears. Right. And during the time I had these tubes, I couldn't get water in my ear. So they had these like little, weird little fucking, I was like Play-Doh, but it was, um, earplugs and it was like, like that so that I could form it to my ear so no ear water could get in because if water got in it would fuck up the things and there could be an issue after this i had less discomfort with my ears because the fluid was gone thanks to the medical procedure so tell me if i have discomfort around my gender identity and who i am my biological sex why would i not go out and seek treatment for that slow food for thought you know that's why they have plastic surgery people get altered and changed to to make themselves feel better. Right, yeah. But do I do I believe that the form mm -hmm. of treatment is correct to try to get rid of this dysphoria? I don't because I think it destroys a lot of people, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. I understand that everybody has my opinion and I respect everybody's opinion. No, you don't. No, the fuck you don't. We've already gone over how you're trying to push an anti-trans agenda. You are not being respectful. But I should also be allowed to voice mine. I mean, don't you think that's fair that people should be able I to... Mean, yeah, it's fucking fair. Don't attack people, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's part of... Well, yeah, that's literally what I've always said and not what you said last year, but now we're at a different place, which is fine. Right, um, yeah. But, okay, so gender dysphoria, um, basically, where you are is you're not saying that there is no such thing as gender dysphoria, but what you're saying is the treatment that exists today... There you go. That's basically what I just said. But here's the thing. Like I said, they toned it down because they're coming on a trans person channel. And they know that this trans person is a little bit fucking iffy. You know, maybe not the best trans person for trans people. So they can come on here and kind of be a little manipulative, be a little sneaky. They say over and over again, gender dysphoria doesn't exist. But here, it's clear that it dysphoria exists, gender dysphoria exists. It's just the treatment that they think is harmful. But that's not the belief they hold. They think gender dysphoria is complete bullshit. You disagree with. Exactly. And okay. that we have to look and we have to look at what exactly if that word gender actually matches with dysphoria, because dysphoria is a word that's very psychologically um, based on different things that every human on this planet feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. And I, and by the way, I, yeah. I wanted to publicly apologize for you with to you because of the way that we confronted. And I know that you said it's okay, but I, I do. For me, you know, there was no need for me to have yeah. like. And I think I was doing that because I was fighting myself. See, when yeah. we fight ourselves, we fight others, mm -hmm. and that that tends to happen. I understand, and uh, I respect you coming out to apologize. But like I said off the air, like personally, me, I'm not somebody that tries to hold grudges and. I don't feel like it's necessary that I need an apology, um, but I, right. I respect somebody realizing that they should apologize, I guess. Um, yeah. However, I will say. Oh yeah, so when they said that, that they don't hold any grudges and shit or whatever, I've had issues with this person in the past before and they have spoken badly about me based on my actions, based on some comments that I made about Blair White. So I said this, I was like, all right, I've been mean to want to have a real conversation with this person for a while, but they're fucking scared. Probably won't ever talk to a leftist again after that terrible fucking conversation with Riley Grace that made him look incredibly fucking stupid. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I said, if you don't hold grudges, can I come on and have a productive conversation? I have no desire to interact with someone that will friend violence against people they disagree with. Let me like it. Oh my God. And I said... You don't have any idea what you're talking about. I don't friend people because I disagree with them. I did that because she personally attacked me and I retaliated. I ain't a bad person, G. I'm just from the streets. You feel me? Don't allow people to disrespect me. It's my morals. I'm growing, though. Hit me up in a DM. I want to have a genuine conversation with you. I care about this community deeply, even you. So, 
everything I said right there. I mean it with my fucking heart. I want unity even with people in the community I don't agree with. Because at the end of the day, we're trans. And at the end of the day, being trans and shit is hard. I would like this person's comment. What the fuck? Oh, I think I was trying to be nice. But I really dislike it, though. But, yeah. So, man, I don't know if you're going to watch this, Mars. But I would love to have a conversation with you. It doesn't have to be public. It could be private. I'm growing as a person. I'm just the type of person where if someone wants to confront me or harass me, like Blair has harassed so many people online that don't bite back. Bitch, I'm fucking like that. You know what I mean? I'm just built like that. I grew up like that. That's how I was raised. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm, I'm from the fucking streets. I'm from the trenches. You know what I mean? Like, if you know my story, then you know the type of people I used to associate with. I'm trying to grow, though. I could never grow until... I got away from that lifestyle and I started to express myself for who I am and having this channel has helped me grown a lot. I am growing and I am committed to being the best I can and putting that street shit, that ignorant ass shit behind me, right? So if we want to have a genuine talk about that, um, fine. Or you just want to keep harping on shit to happen like over a year ago now, fine. I have my issues with Blair and you feel the way you felt about that and other conservative creators think i'm just crazy and don't have they won't engage with me whatsoever i'm not a crazy person i'm intelligent i know what i'm talking about and i care about unity so yeah let's make sure it work anyways back to the video uh, i don't have a problem with you voicing your opinion whether you're transitioning or detransitioning i do find myself a little bit concerned in certain things that you say when you're in uh mark mode or maritza mode because some things I think, like, for example, saying there's no such thing as gender dysphoria. Like, I just feel like that could have been phrased in a different way. And, and now you're the way you're explaining it here makes a little bit more sense, um, you know, or. All right. I was about to give Mark props for calling them out. But then they didn't fucking catch on that the phrasing is different because the audience is different. This person is being a manipulative. Or. You know, I've seen you also say things like, you know, um, trauma is the cause for dysphoria, which in some cases, absolutely agree. But these blanket statements, I think it's, you know, I mean, I don't like what is the benefit of doing that? You know, could, could we phrase it in a different way? So that's where I'm like, yes, absolutely. I feel like, you know, and this is why I have my podcast is because I feel like everybody's story is different. You know, everybody has dysphoria or not or, or in a different way because of certain different causes. So I'm 100% on board with, you know, share your story because I think that, you know, personally me, I believe in the, the you know, not just free speech, but also like I believe that everybody could benefit from a, somebody else's story. Like maybe what you're sharing today, you might help some. I agree 100%. Stories, I love hearing people's stories. I love hearing people's different perspectives and views. And if Maritza was just sharing their story and professing their, professing their um, religious beliefs or whatever it is, I wouldn't have a problem. The issue is, is that it's a clear attack on trans people. It is dangerous and harmful and will lead to real life transphobia. You can go to Marisa Cummings' channel. Uh, it's Transition Radio. We'll pop over there real quick. And it's all very harmful shit. If you watch these videos, you will see how harmful it is. If you think this person is just telling your story. So yeah, so I think that... If Mars doesn't call that out here, that's not going to be okay. And which is why I am afraid that this is going to be harmful platforming. You got to be hard with these people. And you got to be like, hey, nope. You're clearly trying to push some shit. I'm not going to let you do that, right? So if they allow them to snake their way through this and tone down their transphobia. And Mars doesn't push so hard, that's going to be an issue. So we're going to continue. Somebody, but... But saying these things like trauma is a cause of dysphoria, that's that's that would probably be y your case, but not all cases, right? All right, that was good that he said that. No, and I agree. I mean, there's a lot of research that that. But you don't, Maritza. You don't, or you agree, and you're lying on your YouTube channel because you're trying to push an agenda. What you do is you talk about your case and say, this is why trans people do this. Even in the comments, when I said, you can't take a whole group and say they're doing X because of this. You said you can do that. So now you're lying on here. You're a weasel because you got caught.
points out that a lot mm -hmm. of the reasons people do feel this is because they have something that has happened. Do you agree with me that if in a perfect world, in mm -hmm. a utopia, that we would not have trauma, childhood um, challenges and things that we face, that we would all be well-balanced adults living in a picket fence with a family. But things happen in our lives that right. change that kind of pathway. And, and that's not, I don't think that's being disrespectful. I think that's just starting a conversation for people to- No, it's to not being disrespectful, yeah. yeah it's, be, it's analyzing. Mars, I don't know if you're aware of what this person has done, but what they're saying right now is not what their actions are. Actions speak louder than words. So you can say, all right, that's not being disrespectful, but bitch, you're not doing that. And you need to call this person out or else you're gonna lead to like people from your platform going over and thinking that what this person's saying is okay. And what if someone from your platform detransitions or they stop being trans or even they're a cis person and now they have these fucking transphobic beliefs and that plays out as transphobia in real life and more people get hurt. You gotta understand the impact from all this shit. And we learn through communication. The problem right. that I have with a, a lot in the trans community, and I'm sure you do too, is that they don't want to hear it. They want to shut people up mm -hmm. and shut you know, them you know, down. Here's the thing. There is some people like that, and we know this. I've talked about this. I've talked about how toxic the left can be and these fucking woke scolds and shit, right? But when it's a person that's saying harmful shit, that needs to be shut down, right? So I'm not doing that. I'm not just trying to shut people down. I'm not that type of person. However, if you are going to cause harm to my community, you best believe that you're going to have some resistance because it's the way that the marketplace of thought works, right? So you put your shit out there. If it's harmful, you're going to get fucking pushed back. That's how it is. I, I find it really, I feel really weird hearing you say that because you were telling me this a year ago. So do yeah. you not see the irony here? Like, Well, that's why I apologize. Okay. No, I know. I know. I just like <laughs> everything you're saying. It's like, yeah. Uh, I'm oh my god, Mars, if you're fucking relating to this person and agreeing with them, they think you should detransition. They think that you are you live in a fantasy land and you're trying to escape being yourself. Are you serious right now, Mars? Mars, oh my god. If they agree with some shit that you fucking agree with, that might be a fucking issue. You might want to rethink your fucking beliefs. I'm thinking in my head, like, yeah, I know. I've been telling you this. Right. So so it's a little right. bit but, bizarre. Um, however, but in you know, regards to... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. But before that, I was saying the same thing, but mm -hmm. then I went all gun ho when mm -hmm. I got back again with my ex. And right. I was like, okay, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. You know, it's like, no, so why I'm do you, not. <laughs> why, why do you think that is? Why is it that... Because, like, for whatever reason, somebody transitions or detransitions, you know, at the end of the day... Um, I think we could all agree that whether or not you agree with somebody doing those things, like mm -hmm. as long as it makes them happy or they're comfortable or whatever, like to each their own. That's kind of my my stance. Um, mm -hmm. However, uh, something kind of interesting about your story is whether you're detransitioning or transitioning, like it seems like your uh, perspective shifts like to a pretty good extreme. Yes. I'm so happy that Mars mentioned this because it's like I said before, when they were fucking Mark, they were super anti-Christian. Now that they're Maritza, they're super anti-trans and super Christian. It's like, okay, well, do you not have any like core beliefs, like core values and morals? Like that's what guides me. You know what I mean? Like I might have little changes in my life, but it's not drastically, right? So I might act like a different person. I might be a more evolved person than before I transitioned. But at the end of the day, at my heart, at my core, I'm still the same person that has the same general views and beliefs. I've just grown as a person, you know? But when you're flip-flopping from one extreme to another, that's not healthy. And it leaves no room for actual growth because there's no clear direction or path that you're headed. Like, why do you think... Well that is well obviously when i believe something at the moment i believe it with all my heart i'm a very passionate mm -hmm. person and when i no one wants to admit that they made a mistake mm -hmm. when i transitioned back in 2003 it was all gone whole for maybe five years or so but then i started questioning myself and i started like looking at men and looking at myself and i'm like i oh, know i this just no you know mm -hmm. i if if i couldn't be I want to say that that is very toxic and i have done that before you know what i mean um 
it can be damaging because it's really hard when you're a trans woman and you feel the societal pressure to fit these like um expectations that are placed on cis women it's like as a trans woman how am i possibly supposed to do that right so i start looking at other women on instagram and i I get fucking sad about myself right and um that's not healthy right because everyone's different instagram isn't reality we all fucking know that and at the end of the day all men and all women are different. You know, there might be some similarities and there might be some that are more similar, but there's some that are far out there and way different than the, those in their gender. It's just human desire to want to belong, so it can be hard, which is why we need to normalize being different so more people are different. So I have more people that I can look to and be like, oh, I relate to her. You know what I mean? But if you look hard enough, I'm 100% sure you could find men when you were a trans man that you could relate to, you know? a hundred percent a guy then i didn't want it because right. it's it's like it felt awkward to me mm-hmm. my experience and the reason the radical shift is because there's no other way but radical shift either you are or you're not either you you know either you transition or you detransition, and both views are very radical and different hmm. yeah i mean i don't think that's the case at all there's many detransitioners that I hear their story and I don't go make a video on them. And you know why? It's because they're respectful and they just talk about the mistakes that you made. It's not two opposing parties that hold differing beliefs as you make it out to be, you know? That's not what it is. You can detransition and say your truth without saying the truth about the trans community. Yeah. Think about it. I mean, um, um, there are two, two, two spectrums. Yeah, I, I guess I can't necessarily relate to that because I've never felt like I have to. Uh, well, I mean, I haven't. You know, I'm not trying to plan on detransitioning, but I personally, regardless, like, I I try my best to maintain fairly rational in whatever I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, so, I mean, I do see that this is this is the case for some people that have to believe to such an extreme that it doesn't make sense. However, why would I. You- I what yeah. would you say that it's extreme? I mean, it's to me when I say extreme, it's um, right. trying to convince me that biological sex isn't binary, for example, or or anything else. Um, like that to me is uh, a certain belief system that. Well, I mean, it's not like by definition, biological sex is more varied than just male and female we know this because intersex is a condition is it a rare condition yes it is but it is and i've shown that chart before of the process of in the womb of how your gender is actually formed and it's a complicated fucking process with many verities so that is just factually incorrect mars here's the thing i know we were taught a lot of things growing up in school but however that is not scientific and medical fact medical fact is that biological sex is a little bit more complicated than just being male and female intersex does exist so it's not strictly a binary but about 99 percent of the time it is a binary so you know what i mean we have to be careful when we say that comes with being transgender to me is is radical because there shouldn't be a belief system that has to come with whether or not you're trans um well, well see exactly that has nothing to fucking do with that there's no belief system it's just scientific fact that sex is like that biological sex is more varied than you believe now trans people aren't trying to force you to believe that because you disagree with them and because you have to go off the trans cult it's because it's fucking wrong it's factually wrong google it on your computer it's not hard well you know, there, I hear you. there there should be causes I'm sure like right that you were talking about trauma and perhaps that is tied to why you uh originally transitioned i don't know personally me i've never had trauma so so when i see this being pushed out there it's like yeah absolutely some people have trauma and transition but also what about people like me right well when i say trauma remember trauma is not doesn't have to be like some sort of explosion losing Mm -hmm. a limb a death of, you know, trauma could be seen, especially when you're growing up, it could, something that's so small for somebody else could be very huge for another human being. Certain yeah. words that a parent may use that may traumatize you. So verbal or injury, physical. 
Yeah, exactly. It, it could be anything. A situation may feel, you may be felt like you were incompetent. Um, you may have been compared to a sibling and, and felt less mm. than. There's many reasons. Okay. Trauma doesn't have to be an explosion. doesn't have to be a trauma blunt instrument over your yeah. head or anything. Okay, so any fucking little childhood issues that you would have is a reason that you're fucking trans now. You know, like I've been saying, it, it could be. There's a lot of shit you got to look into and you got to know that for yourself. But everyone has that. And trans people are still like 1% of the population. So something isn't adding up there. Everyone has those experiences. And like you said, they might be def affected to one degree or another, but it just doesn't make sense. Something like that. Their emotional traumas, their, their mental traumas, there's all sorts of different types of traumas yeah. that we face. That and yeah, only 1% is trans. So like, it doesn't seem to be the biggest issue of people um, mistaking these types of traumas for being trans. Because if this was a very common thing that happened, it would be more than 1% of trans people. That could lead us to that. Right. And that's what where I'm getting at. And it, maybe it's, it's ch uh, choice of words that I need to learn how to choose certain words so people don't get so off put by the way I speak. No, I think you choose your words carefully. I think you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm growing as an individual. Having Asperger makes it very difficult to do that. And I'm sure those that have Asperger could relate with that mm -hmm. because it's sometimes hard for us to, to have socialization, communication with people. So, okay. So I, I guess, uh, what part do you think that plays into like feeling like you have to have like this sort of rigid identity, uh, the fact that you have As Asperger's, do you think it impacts that at I all? I think so. I think so. And I think a lot of trans people also have Asperger's. There's a mm -hmm. lot of research that there are a lot of them that are neurologically impaired. A very I mean, this is a common thing is that a lot of trans people tend to have autism. However, not enough studies have been done to conclude the in total reasoning. Um, speculations have been that uh, kids will develop these autistic um, tendencies or, or Asperger's when they're young because of that gender confusion, because of that gender um that gender dysphoria right so they're not going to socialize as well because of the struggle that they're having which might lead to being autistic or asperger's or whatever we still don't know what the correlation is however there is a correlation that is interesting i would like to do more research into that myself because i only know a little bit about that topic very large majority yeah. and we see things either black or white you mm -hmm. know it's hard for us to see things in shade of gray it's either no, you see things black and white. I think I've been very consistent in the fact that there's variety in the world and that everyone's different because, you know, I seek that out. I seek out watching documentaries from people from different communities and different places. I love to learn and gain information. Knowledge is power. Grow. Either this way or that way. And I totally agree with you regarding this whole concept of, you know, the biological. Biological. And you still agree with that, right? That it's either you're either... Biologically female, or biologically a male. Yeah, that doesn't change that, ever. That doesn't change, and mm -hmm. that's. I just went over like it's scientifically not true. Like with trans people or not, it doesn't matter. Trans people didn't exist. That still wouldn't be a true statement. When I was fighting you on that, it was like more of fighting me because I I knew deep in my heart mm -hmm. that there's no way of changing biology. Right, but I was yeah. just trying, you know, you try to like pull it off. You try to like, like many of the strict advocates that just want to push their views on everyone. <clears throat> yeah. And even I'm, though it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this comment real quick uh, by Lackluster. They said, I have Asperger's and I relate to what she's saying. It can be very easy to get stuck on things. Being literal and black and white, we become passionate. So exactly. I just want to add that and, to the conversation. And that's mm -hmm. my thing. People misinterpret mm -hmm. me. They I've got so many people that dislike me because of my personality. No, stupid bitch. You got people that dislike you because you're directly attacking the trans community and saying things that will lead to real-world racism. They're not racism. Real-world transphobia harming people. 
This is why you're getting pushback. What you're doing is harmful and dangerous. You know, but if they yeah. really got to know the true me, then you, they would know who I am. Right. You know? Bitch, I don't care who you are. You know, if, if, if Tron shit was aside, we could probably sit down, have a drink, you know, have a smoke, whatever it may be. And we fucking, we could have a good time. We could probably talk and vibe and shit like that. You're probably a fine person. I don't care about that. What I care about is the harmful shit you're putting out. You know yeah. What? And uh, I, I mean, I will say, I don't think that you intentionally are trying to cause harm to anybody. Okay. And this is, we are 16 minutes in and Mars has been way too nice and way too soft on this fucking person. You are platforming a dangerous person. I don't know if you're ignorant or what the cause is, but this person has toned down to transphobia and are saying a little bit different things that contradict what they've been saying on their channel. If you go to their actual fucking channel that is filled with fucking hate, you can go to their channel, Transition Radio Show. You can go to your channel and you can see that what they've been spewing is actually hate and they actually have an anti-trans agenda. So Mars saying that I don't think you're trying to harm anyone is harmful in itself. You are platforming a dangerous person and you are not doing it responsibly, Mars, okay? Uh, whether you're detransitioning or, or transitioning, um, I, I do think though that, um, you know, I, I also do think, you know, like, um, we probably should be more cautious when we keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm wondering, like, how do you, okay, so, like, since you've obviously detransitioned a lot, like, what what do you do to transition again that many times? Like, do you see a therapist or, like, how do you how do you get back on testosterone uh, every every time? Is it just a matter of seeing a therapist or do you just go to, like, plant therapy, uh, plan a parent herself? Now, who the fuck is letting this person go back and forth a million times? Someone help this bitch. She need help. This bitch need Jesus. She be talking about Jesus all the time. She need Jesus. Something like that. Because I, I've often wondered, like, if you're detransitioning that many times and retransitioning, I, I would think that's kind of a red flag. Um, but I don't know what the process has been for you. There is no process. That's the problem. You know, there's really no gatekeeping. There's nothing there when I... Every time I would retransition or go back mm -hmm. to trying to be Mark Angelo, I would just go to a, a clinic. And for instance, when I lived in Portland, they had a, a clinic that it was very easy. You just go okay. in there and you say, boom, boom. And they, they don't even ask for ID or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the. Yeah. So this is uh, in America, at least I don't know about other countries, but this is a state by state issue. So some states, it's very hard to get on hormones. You have to go to multiple therapists, multiple doctors, get sign offs, and it could take over a year for the process. In other states, they have what is called informed consent. So me being from Chicago and being in Illinois, that state allows informed consent. I just had to go in. Well, here's the thing is that I did see a therapist because I wanted to work out the shit because I didn't personally know what I wanted to do. After seeing a therapist for what, a long enough time, I took the initiative on my own without a letter of my therapist or anything, but she was 100% supportive in this and everything. Anyways, I just went in and they told me everything that hormones can do, told me the health risk and everything, and they gave me a sheet that had all this information on it, and I had to sign it, and I got my hormones, and that's how it works, right? But not every state is the same. So the question is, is that should there be gatekeeping from the medical community when it comes to giving people hormones? And honestly, my personal opinion is no. At the end of the day, you might say like, oh, well, we don't want people who shouldn't be transitioning to end up transitioning. But I think that it causes less harm to let people make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes because it can be corrected. There might be some permanent changes, but you can always go back. You can always detransition and it goes for the other way around. If you're old and you don't know if you can transition or not, you can always transition. You know, um, you can always change shit in life. Life is too short to fucking wait. You know what I mean? Fuck that shit. Do your research. Make sure you're making the right decision. But don't be overly terrified because if you make a mistake, it can always be corrected. Problem with this, yeah. that the gate came that once upon a time, because when I first transitioned, I had to do therapy for almost six to, six months to a year. Right, back in the day, yeah. And I, yeah, and I had the paper stating I had gender dysphoria. Mm -hmm. But... Okay. It's like what kind of, what kind of 
therapists are gender specialists. There's really not that, there's no specific. Tr well, my therapist was not a gender specialist. My therapist actually specialized in working with LGBT people, working with people who have eating disorders and who uh, self-harm as well. Uh, so like they, they did have a specialty in working with LGBT people and they knew a lot about trans people, but they were not a gender therapist. They were just a therapist and I fucking loved her. She was amazing. Training for that. It's, it's all just kind of like played upon itself. And the yeah. same thing for those that do surgery. There's no school of SRS, you know, I, there isn't. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's a, I agree. Uh, gender therapists are, in my opinion, more of a, a belief system than a scientifically factual, like they're, they're, they're really just running with this narrative that I have to believe yeah, in. They're, ad, um, they're advocates. That's mm -hmm. what they are. They're advocates. They're not professional therapists. Yeah. Because yeah, if, no. if they were, they would look into the problems that we have before they just hand out hormones the way yeah. they do. Yeah. That's why um, me and a lot of other people have said that if you're looking for someone who's going to give a really unbiased opinion on if you should transition or not, don't go to a gender therapist, go to just a normal therapist. I guess kind of to uh, move a little bit away from gender dysphoria, we could agree that dysphoria does, it is a thing, but there's different causes for it. And you know, the treatment that, that is, uh, look at how uncomfortable Maritza looks big mad because in their mind they want to push their fucking anti-trans shit and be like gender is fire it doesn't exist but they they got caught up in the beginning and they had to basically say that it does exist and like i said they're toning down the transphobia and the bullshit and this person is too stupid to recognize what's happening here and they're allowing it thinking that this is a genuine conversation that this person is just sharing their experiences mars listen to me that's not what happening. This person's being slimy, okay? This person spews nothing but hate, and you're not holding them accountable. Right now for, for gender dysphoria is, uh, you know, testosterone or estrogen, which is where you don't agree. Exactly. I think that there could be a lot more studies done. Mm -hmm. I think that it could be a lot better treatments than just the one-size-fits-all, and that we need to really look at... You know, if there was a way to change the brain to make it so that you no longer feel that discomfort and you could just live as the gender you were born as, that might be a good thing. However, at this point, we don't have that, right? The only course of reason, the only way you can go is you could just deal with living as the opposite or as the fucking biological sex you were born as. And it's probably not going to be the best existence being a person with gender dysphoria or you can transition. Those are the options available. So, yeah, that would be nice. But I don't know if you even want that because you seem to be strictly anti-trans, right? You don't seem to be, like, compassionate about these people that suffer from gender dysphoria because you actually don't think it exists. You think it's bullshit and you think whatever. What is gender dysphoria because we know what dysphoria is like i said everyone on this planet has some sort of dysphoria but they added the word gender mm -hmm. when it used to be gender identity disorder i don't necessarily believe that everybody on this planet has dysphoria because well they, i mean do you think it we already went over this i think my little things are still up yeah so i mean people do have dysphoria you can have dysphoria about things. I don't know if everyone does. I I think people have briefly all felt a state of being dysphoric. But when we talk about gender dysphoria, once again, we're talking to your biological not matching up with your identity and the pain that that causes, which is very real. You know, it's just blanketed real. Everybody's happy with how they look. I mean, nobody's think... perfect, so I don't think we're all. I don't think I don't think anybody wakes up uh, thinking, well, maybe some people do, but yeah, no one's perfect. So we all have some flaws that we don't like. But I wouldn't say exactly. that they're dysphoric about. I don't know. They're dysphoric about the, the size of their biceps or something, and and now they want to transition. Like that's where I'm like. I mean, discomfort is one thing, but dysphoria to an extent where it causes distress is another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, like when it's 
gender dysphoria and it's so closely tied to that it it, it is a little bit different 100 percent I wanted to point out something that Ellie 8 says, I'm vicious and callous. Well, I don't understand why people think that I'm vicious and callous. Because the shit that you spew. What the fuck? Oh, my God. You're going to come on here and act like you're just telling your story. But then if you go to your channel, the video that we just watched of you, literally the video that I just fucking reacted to. I, I got rid of it. But here, we'll just go right here. This shit. Trying to say that this letter from a dominatrix proves that all trans women are AGPers and fetishists. And that gender dysphoria doesn't exist. And everyone that's trans is doing it for escapism. But then you want to come on here and tone it down. Okay? Yeah, you're a fucking, you're a vicious piece of shit. That I'm passionate about something and I'm can be very hard headed and that's mm -hmm. part of my Asperger. But I don't ever do anything being callous or vicious. Well bullshit let's see what mars says let's see if mars agrees with her or calls out the bullshit we'll probably disagree here but uh you you were vicious at times okay <laughs> like thank you okay oh my god mars hasn't been tough enough and which is why i say that this has been dangerous platforming but credit where credit is due Thank you for calling that out and saying that she has. We'll see what he says next. Like I, I didn't bring you on here to, to discuss all right, that, but right. you know, if you say, if you go around saying that I should have never transitioned, I should detransition, uh, to me, that's like personal. And there's no need for that. Right. Um, so, but I don't want to get into that. So, I mean, okay. I, I just think there's. Mars, for the hundredth time, as a person with a platform, you have to get into that because you're allowing this person to be slimy and to tone down the amount of transphobia that they're spewing and the clear anti-trans agenda that they're pushing, the narrative that they're pushing over and over again. You're allowing them to tone that down and then get away with it. And you're not holding them accountable. You're showing them on your platform, which is gonna lead to more people getting hurt. Please be more responsible. Like, I take this shit seriously and you should too. There's reasons that people might see you in a different light because who you are today is totally different from you know, last year. You've been detransitioning for how long now? Um, well, gosh, I mean, from the beginning that I started no, 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 2015, like right now, back like and forth, been, no, like currently, since like, last year, since last year, okay, December. Since, since last year, December. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I guess in terms of dysphoria now, for you as a, a detrans woman, like, what do you, do you deal with dysphoria and what do you do to treat it since you're, you know, obviously trying to step away from transitioning? Good question. I don't deal with dysphoria anymore. I mean, I've made peace with who I am. Bullshit. Or maybe, maybe, shit, maybe being trans was completely escapism from you. Because if you were actually trans and you fucking detransitioned, you would fucking still be dysphoric about that shit. So I don't know, maybe you were really just trying to escape. You know, do I wish mm -hmm. that, like, my hair would grow back and I didn't have to wear wigs? Do I wish that I didn't have to shave every day? Yeah. That I could have laser, you know, professional laser and get all that mm -hmm. removed in my body hair? Of course. But it doesn't... It's just annoying, you know, to have to like takes an yeah. hour in the morning to, to get ready because of all the things that, that okay. I have to tend to to present as a female in the world. So there's but it doesn't make them feel like uncomfortable. I don't know. OK, no, no dysphoria whatsoever for you, like physically. No, I've I've worked through all that because, like I said, I've been doing this since. Two OK, so here's the thing. Once again, is th they're they're trying to now push some shit about you can just overcome your dysphoria and not d dysphoria once again in the beginning when they said that oh gender dysphoria is real i just disagree on how to treat it you don't fucking believe that you believe that dysphoria is a mask is a cover from trauma you have childhood trauma and then you think you have dysphoria or whatever so you use that as escapism and now that you worked for your shit you no longer have that that might actually be your case in which case you transition 100 percent for the wrong reasons but to say that you're trying to say this is all trans people and that's what you do on your channel 2015 the back and forth, the back and forth, and every step got me closer emotionally and mentally to where so, I am today. Mm -hmm. So what did you do differently this time that you feel is perhaps the final time? I just, no, not perhaps, <laughs> it's the final time, all my paper. Shit, hey, you said, um, you said the last two fucking times you detransitioned, it was the final time, and then when you became Mark again, that that was the final time, so fuck, we'll see. Goddamn, if this person becomes Mark again, 
I don't know what they're going to say. Because last time they detransitioned and became Mark again, they, they took a long time apologizing to the community. I don't think the community is going to fucking listen this time or give a shit. So this might be the final time, you know? I, I got know. changed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Mm -hmm. um, just the fact that I know that this didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. It solved absolutely nothing. I remember when I was uh, in Silver City working transitioning isn't supposed to solve anything but one problem and that's a problem of not being your fucking self right just be yourself it's not going to solve your surrounding life fucking issues it might impact those in a positive way but at the end of the day you shouldn't be like oh my god my life's terrible let me transition oh that didn't solve it no shit it's not how it works working for walmart at the time and i was split up with my ex and all i kept thinking is like if i wanted to ask this girl out and I would tell her the truth about me, what are the chances that she's gonna say no? Because a lot of women want babies. They wanna have a normal relationship with a yeah. guy. They mm -hmm. looked at me and I was this guy that's like, you know, I, I pulled it off. But I knew from the moment that I would open my mouth and say something, the possibility would be very high that they'd be put off. So I'm yeah. like- And that's fine. And there's people that don't wanna date a trans person for one reason or another. Um, and that's fucking okay. You know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of people who want to date you. I've been happily in a relationship for over two years as a trans woman, you know? Uh, I'm with a person who wants to build a life with me, and I don't, I can't see my future with anyone else for right now. You know what I mean? Obviously, things can always change. Life is life, but I am very happy with the route that I have chose, right? And you can find that. And so that's, I don't know what you're trying to say this as or whatever, as that makes you less of a man or whatever. It just makes you a different type of man or when you were a man. And it's okay. Like, I don't know why you're saying this. Yeah. Like, do I want to live the rest of my life like that? Having the Like what? Like, like what? Like what? You think you're going to be rejected by everyone? You won't find anyone? Especially if you're a Gen Zer like me. Listen, I'm 22. I'm like one of the older people in Gen Z, but I'm still Gen Z. If you're Gen Z, you could fucking find someone so easy. People don't give a fuck in my generation. And a lot of people in Gen Z, they don't want to have kids anyway. Because we see all the bullshit. We see how the world is. And we're like, yeah, I don't know if we want to bring a kid into this shit. Like, Gen Z is getting married less and having kids less than any other generation. So, yeah. And like pretend I'm something that I'm not mm -hmm. and then like put myself through all those heartaches and not be able to give a woman I've been madly in love the past two years like if you're trans you you can have love what that woman really wants and that, yeah. what a fucking baby what, what? Yeah. that's uh, my my belief no, this that's is, fine. yeah it yeah, doesn't yeah. have to be anybody else that's how I thought so from that it just continued to fester in mm -hmm. my brain. You know, it's like being in the gym, seeing all these guys. Huh? You know, it's like if I ever got into an altercation with a guy, as as big as I got and as strong as I thought I was, I'd be squished. I don't know. They were pretty fucking big. You know, they were pretty big. They were pretty fucking buff. Um, They claimed that it's aesthetics that like trans men, when they look big, they're not really that strong. I don't buy it. Their ex also said that um, they were abused, their ex as a trans woman, and they said that uh, Mark was very strong and would physically hold them down and restrain them, which is not okay, and I can't speak to that because obviously that's one person's account against another, but yeah, I fucking doubt it. it act like you're just like a little fucking daisy, like, those muscles don't lie, that's not aesthetics, but fuck, no. Well, I think it depends oh, on the guy, to be honest, but... Well, but, but I, I would Most say, guys. obviously, we have a disadvantage when you're born female to fight a, a dude. But I will also say some dudes are pretty petite and, and yeah, I would yeah. say... That's who. That's who. There's a lot of cis men that are tiny as shit. Average guy. Yeah. But the, the average, average guy. The average guy, the average guy sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, perhaps. Um, Especially if they're in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm going to... I'm going to put this question up, uh, kind of okay. curious to see what you think. Elle asks, so she has dysmorphia and not dysphoria. Uh, what are your thoughts? No, no, I got diagnosed with dysphoria. I went almost a year to a gender mm -hmm. specialist. Wait, I thought dysphoria didn't exist. And I was diagnosed with Okay, dysphoria. but 
but but you you basically said everything you've said so far to me oh. seems like you don't really believe in, in dysphoria being well, a, so so even if you say I was diagnosed with dysphoria we just agreed that the process of getting diagnosed is kind of phony so so how could you actually sit there and say it's def it was definitely dysphoria and then now you're well, okay well it's good that Mars is pushing this point like I said Mars has been too soft but Okay, Mars, I hope you're able to see that this person is slimy and they're just trying to push one narrative and they want people to come to that conclusion. However, coming onto a trans person's podcast, they have to tone it down a little bit. They have to lie a little bit and now you're seeing that the pieces aren't fading together. So I don't know if you're just going to take what this person says and let them continue or what's going to happen, but let's see. Oh, well, well that's what what they had diagnosed me with, this dysm yeah. dysmorphia. I mean, there, there's different things. What I could say for sure is that we have mm -hmm. a neurological problem. The way that we see ourselves okay, is I could totally agree. different. I could agree with that. What, yeah. Yeah. Right. So whatever label, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, humanities, we use labels to label everything. The letter of the alphabet and the LGBT keeps, keeps growing. We, we've got to put people in boxes all the time. Mm -hmm. So whether we call it dysmorphia, dystorsia, this dysphoria, not a line or whatever, there's something wrong neurologically with us that causes us to yeah. feel this way. Um, okay. So I, I definitely do think that there is, you know, this kind of goes to the question like, is, is gender dysphoria a mental disorder or not? You know, and this obviously depends on who you ask. Some people don't see it that way. Some people do. I do think that, you know, we all have different. Me personally, I don't know if this is going to be problematic to some people, but I do think dysphoria is a mental disorder because, like, you're not supposed to feel that way, right? Um, whatever you do to alleviate that, like, you're not supposed to feel dysphoric. Like, you're not supposed to feel bad about the sex you were born. That's why it's 1% of the population as trans people. So, yeah, 100% is a mental health condition, and you should seek treatment for it if it's serious enough. You know, you should transition to alleviate that. Probably causes for having dysphoria, and, uh, like, for example, I've never, to me, I've never had, like, uh, I've never had an eating disorder or trauma, right? Like, these are things that you definitely have experienced. So, those, oh, yeah. are, those are two major things that are connected to dysphoria. So, right. maybe you did have this, this or, uh, sorry, dysmorphia. So perhaps he did have dysphoria, but I mean, we could say that because of that, because of the eating disorder and trauma, that dysmorphia could have caused dysphoria or it could have confused that. But do you know how many people have eating disorders that are part of the trans oh, community? A whole lot. A lot and, people, a and a lot, lot of those people. people probably shouldn't transition either, but I'm not, I'm not going to stop somebody physically from doing right. what they but want, you know? Let's let's look at this. Who should transition and who shouldn't? How do we know what dysmorphia or dysphoria is? There's really no two objective tests. Mm -hmm. Did you have to go under an MRI or did you have any blood work to tell you without a shadow of a doubt or any of us that transition to say, yep, they're uh, And that's the thing with it is that there's no definitive way, like they're saying, to 100% tell. So it's very much so something that you have to look inside yourself and you have to look through past experiences and you have to know you're doing it for the right reason. And, you know, take that shit seriously. Take the time that you need. It's okay. You can wait as long as you need. Transition will always be there for you. And once again, like I said, if you don't fucking know, just try the hormones, you know? At the end of the day, anything can be reversed. Just, if you think you're trans but you have doubts, just try to transition. Take it slowly, you know? Um, start using she, her in social situations. You can dress more feminine. Well, I'm saying from my perspective as like a trans woman, but it could be vice versa. Just take it slow. Take it step by step. And if you start to not like it, you can stop. That simple. Not a lot of harm really comes from transitioning by mistake. And that's just my personal opinion. I, I, I feel that way. You definitely have it. Here it is in black and white. No, there's but nothing. there's, there's, yeah. And there, I don't think there will realistically ever be like a, a test to know who is trans, who. Oh, what the fuck? What just happened? If you try to like, like many of the strict advocates that just want to push their views. Fuck, where were we? I mean, we could say that because of that, because of the eating disorder and trauma, that this more. Do. It's like 
So who do we know and how do we know who has it, who doesn't? And that to me makes sense because if, if I was a therapist and somebody came to me and they said that, you know, they have a lot of, you know, trauma, that they were abused when they were a kid, and then also they have an eating disorder and they believe that they should transition, I would probably take a slower process in allowing them to just transition because by, by them explaining, to, uh, um, sharing all of that, it kind of tells me that there's a lot of work that, that should be done here. And perhaps, you know what I'm saying? Like that's where, right. but we're not really concerned with. Yeah, and that's valid. I don't have an issue with that. You, you should look into any issues you're having and see if that's a reason as to why you want to transition or not. Because yeah, it has to come from the right place. Why somebody's dysphoric, why somebody yeah. believes they're a man or woman, the cause, like, that doesn't matter. The why is completely out of the question because the idea is, I believe I'm a man. Why? Because I say so. And that's kind of the problem, and that's why we're here, which it sucks. Um, so I don't know how we're going to turn the wheel back, but but that's kind of where I see, like, we should focus on the why a little bit more. And where do we draw the line on trauma? Like I mentioned earlier, what may be something small to somebody may be something really large to somebody else. Like, for instance, mm. let's say you're a six-year-old and at the moment, your father said something horrible to you compared to your brother and said, well, your brother is much, a lot smarter than you. Mm -hmm. Boom. That right. entered into the little six-year-old psyche that all of a sudden you're like, I'd be better off if I was a boy. Because Maybe or maybe not. <laughs> Once again, clear as day. I don't know if everyone is seeing what I'm seeing. But once again, they go on that little track that they're on, this little narrative that they continue to push, and they're consistent in every video and everything they say, this anti-trans agenda, that being trans is escapism, and that no one is trans for genuine reasons, that it's from childhood trauma, rather it be as small as this or something major, you could see it. You could see it. All the stars align, and you could see what this person is doing. I see right through you. I know exactly what you're doing. Because my brother's yeah. a boy, and he's better. You know, little things like that. Yeah. So how do okay. we determine? How do we determine what is trauma and what is not trauma? What created well, us to want to be mm -hmm. the opposite gender that we were born as? I think. Uh, I think this varies based on the person. So I'm not. I don't have all the answers, but my, my take on this is, you're right, right? There is trauma where uh, somebody was sexually abused. That's trauma. Right. But there's also traumatic experiences such as, you know, uh, if you're a boy and you're very feminine and you constantly get bullied, you know, it doesn't have to be physical. It could just be calling you, you know, nasty names all the time. That is exactly. then now traumatic and that, that, um, that could contribute. This is what I believe anyways. I believe that um, certain things in everybody's childhood, including mine, probably did contribute to my dysphoria. I don't think that in my past, at least, there's nothing I could pinpoint and say that's it. But there are definitely moments where I can say that definitely made me feel more dysphoric. For example, exactly. you know, kind of uh, the time where uh, at school you're it's OK to play with the boys and be rough. And then suddenly you're in the fifth grade or sixth grade. And now we're splitting up girls with boys. If you're dysphoric, that could be, you know, a little bit traumatic. So I understand what you're saying, um, and this yeah. is, this is the this is perhaps the problem in, you know, we can get into a little bit of religious people and stuff. Is that uh, I don't think they understand the difference between somebody who is uh, transitioning or or somebody who is transgender and somebody who is just gender nonconforming. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. Is that there's a big difference? Gender roles and how you express your gender is different about you know what gender you are you can be a boy that likes girl shit or you could be a girl that likes boy shit and we need to normalize this and why do we need to normalize this because if it becomes normalized we're gonna have less fucking people detransitioning because they thought they had to be this gender because they like that shit it, it goes back to what i comes what i always say deep in your heart if you look inside and you're truly this gender you'll fucking know that and you'll know what to do for yourself do, never do anything because you're looking at what you're supposed to be or you're looking at what other people are doing. Do shit from your own conviction and be your fucking self to the fullest extent you can. Because I see a lot of this uh, coming from the religious right. Like they're, you know, they're so concerned with a kid 
you know, if a kid is feminine, that doesn't automatically mean that mean that they're transgender, and it's okay to be gender nonconforming. And so, I don't know what your take would would be on that. You know, uh, well, how to kind of get the religious people to understand that if you if you force a gender nonconforming kid to abide by the the gender you know expectations, that could cause even more dysphoria to a point that they later transition. So it's like we it's a very fine line. I agree totally. I think that people's personalities should be allowed to be and shine the way they are. You got a little mm -hmm. boy that's feminine and flamboyant, or you got a little girl that's very tomboyish. She shouldn't be shamed. I, I was shamed. You know, I was very mm -hmm. much shamed, you know, um, as a child for being. Yeah, I was uh, I was told for a young age I was I was shamed, too. And I was reinforced that men are this and women are this and you can't do this. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's 100 percent damaging. So. Now, there is some positive things that are coming out of this. However, we shouldn't take this and warp it into something that's isn't more tomboyish than the average. I mean, my mom wanted me to be a freely little girl, and that's not me. I mean, it, that'll never be me. You mm -hmm. know, I was never like that. But I do believe that by shaming someone or trying to force them to be something they're not is going to cause a lot of harm. I think right. a lot of these parents that are trancing their children don't want to have a little gay boy or a little um, lesbian daughter. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, now we're going to some super harmful shit. So we need to see how Mars is going to react to this. Because once again, we're trying to see, is this person uh, poorly platforming this person? Is Are they not platforming in the right way? Is this dangerous? Will this cause harm? And right now, they're saying... They're making a claim that parents are transing their children. Parents are turning their children into fucking trans people because they don't want them to be gay or lesbian, which there might be isolated cases of this happening, but this is not a crisis. This is a straw man. This shit does not happen on a regular basis. Or tomboys or whatever. So they're like, oh, they're trans. Here, let's let's make them normal, you know, Definitely, in their minds. That's the, yeah, that's the case for some of them for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, okay, so Mars does agree to this crazy fucking Republican talking point. This this doesn't happen, okay? Parents are not transing their fucking kids. I, I've never heard of a parent who's like, oh my god, they're acting this way. Let's get them on hormones. Usually it's a kid that will say, hey, I want to be a girl, I want to be a boy, and whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? I think the rest are just very misinformed and believe they're doing right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I don't want to get, like I said, I... This, I didn't bring you on big bring you on here to make this personal or anything, but there are some things about your past that I, um, I am curious what you think. Um, since okay. you're talking about you know your parents didn't want a little gay boy or whatever, um, in your in your case, like you've said, so I did watch your interview with Ruth uh, Institute, okay, and you said mm -hmm. some. Okay, so this is going to be important right here. First off, I, I will be making a video on Ruth Institute later. It is a terrible fucking organization that claims to take care or they claim to fight for the family the traditional family meaning that they do not want p kids to be transitioning and shit like that that they don't want lgbt people they want the traditional family you know white picket fence dog house shit like that uh straight kids you know they want that sort of thing that's what they are all about and right now this is very important because i want to see how Maritza handles being called out about some of their harmful rhetoric and I want to see then how hard or how soft Mars is going to be against us. All right, let's say. Things on there that uh, I, I wouldn't, I'd like to elaborate or have you elaborate a little bit more on, which is like, mm -hmm. okay, so one thing you pointed out was that you talked about uh, how your mother never wanted you to be gay and whatnot, um, which later on you ended up marrying a man for what it sounds like the wrong reasons. Uh, yeah. And then another thing you said was like you were like saying um, that gay people aren't – it's not like a, a thing. Like they're not uh, – you're not born gay. Um, so I, I kind of want to, if you don't mind, discuss like – No, not at all. What, I mean you think they're about, my views. They're my yeah. views in my opinion. I mean I don't okay. think that I should be crucified for having an no, opinion. No, you shouldn't, but, but I'm Everybody has, to hear more. Okay. I, I totally don't believe that anyone's mm -hmm. born gay. The research, and the Ruth Institute has done a lot of research and other places have done research, prove that there's no genetic factor that says that you are born gay. They've done mm -hmm. research with twins. And if it was genetic, both twins every single time would both be gay. Mm -hmm. So I believe that being gay or a lesbian is situational, traumatic. And there's a lot of people, situational meaning... Um, 
you could be sexually molested by a guy or you you may have a very cold fish mother like in my case all right so basically trying to say that no one is born innately great no one is born having a sexual attraction to the same sex that it is uh caused by trauma so basically the same belief that they have against trans people basically that it's not real it's trauma and it's a mask all right so that's not good my mother was not very nurturing and loving so i looked for that in other women my dad okay. was a, a abusive alcoholic mm -hmm. so i feared men so i was like yeah. men was a there's no way i'm going to be with men because of that and again when you're a kid there's little things add up and they become bigger and bigger and bigger things and they fester and so i think we come to a point where we experiment and i experimented mm -hmm. and i when i was uh, molested the person who molested me put it in my ear that i should tried doing stuff to my friend girlfriends yeah so for me it was situational it was trauma based and i see lots and lots and lots of people that the same thing and, and again you know yeah i'm not pushing my views on anyone these are my beliefs and what well, i've studied mm -hmm. and, and what i've learned through okay so they're trying to be careful once again what they'll do on their actual channel is they'll say the same thing and then they'll say all right so if you're being gay no, look back at your trauma. That's why you're gay. If you're trans, look back. That's why you're you're trans. But here, because they know the audience, because they know that they're coming onto a trans person's platform, they're being weaselly, right? So they're saying, oh, this is just me. This is just me. This is not the typical rhetoric that they've been spewing, right? Through the research, as a matter of fact, I'm going to have a show Sunday regarding that. How like being gay is not genetic. You're not born that way. And then they say that. Then they say that. So in the same breath, you're going to fucking say that it, it's just me. Oh, it just wasn't for me. And that this is just my views. But then you're going to turn right around, slap us all in the face and say, oh, I got a show on Sunday. Why uh, uh, being gay is not genetic. Contradictory. I hope Mars, I hope you're able to see that clear as day. This person right here has an agenda and they're pushing it. And, and I've interviewed a lot of people and I'm continuing to that share so, their story. So, re okay, so let's just say regardless whether- I'm not, I wanna say I'm not judging. Everyone's entitled to live the way they wanna live. Mm. Okay, but you are directly attacking the community, okay? I, I don't fucking care if you're personally judging me or if I can live how I live. You're saying a lot of harmful shit that's gonna hurt people, which is why I have a problem. If you can't grasp this, then you're not grown enough to play with the adults, okay? Go sit at the child's table. I'm not anyone to say, stop them, you know, don't let them. It's, I'm just sharing information. Okay. And I think that's important for us to be open enough to be able to communicate. Well, do you think information can be harmful? Let's see this. All right, what about QAnon? Do you think that it's okay that they're posting these crazy conspiracy theories about the government because they're just sharing information? They tried an insurrection on January. I think it was the 26th. They tried to break into the fucking Capitol. Do you think that the opinions that the Nazis had that they were just spreading the information that Germans, you know, they're the superior race or whatever. What did that lead to? We all know. I don't have to say it. Information is what leads to real world effects. Which is why I take this shit so seriously. And no, it's not because you have a different opinion or whatever bullshit. It's because the shit you're saying is harmful. It's a very unique choice to, to go down that path, though, because... Um, so a lot of things that, okay, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, you detransition and, and you become religious and then now it seems I'm not like religious. I'm not, not religious, religious in the lead. No, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious at all. I believe okay, in Jesus spiritual. Christ. Fucking call it what you want. We, we know what you're doing. Well, okay, but I, you believe I, in God, basically, right? Of course, yeah, but okay. that doesn't make me religious. No, it's I'm, just, I'm just, um, okay, so you're marriage. very spiritual. And, um, mm -hmm. and so now your position is like kind of getting to the bottom of why people are gay. Um, but, but you also like, here's the thing, like, I'm always going to be like, say, speak your mind. Cause that's a, that's a big thing I'm passionate about. I want everybody to be able to speak their mind, you know? And if, if, if we can't speak our minds, then this conversation wouldn't be happening right now. Right. Like, and I'm here exactly. trying to understand your point of view, but 
like just like the same way when you were transitioning versus detransition now you do kind of make it a little bit personal which is where i i get mars listen you i don't know if you understand the full extent of what this person is doing but they're 100 percent pushing an agenda don't be afraid you got to be a little bit more hardline on this you can't be like oh but well, you uh you do make it uh look you sound like a fucking pussy mars all right call them out this shit leads to damage a little concerned because some of the things you said on that interview you said um i can't directly quote you but you said uh, one thing about being an lgbt is you're in one relationship and out the other because you're always searching for something you never find it and well god damn that isn't that another stereotype of gay people that they just like to fuck a lot or whatever the hell jeez that's that, what i saw but that, that's what i saw I'm, i lived in the community for years since i was 13 and that's what i saw and but how is that helpful be, like that that's where i'm like how is it helpful to make that sort of blanket statement on a youtube channel because now thank you all right there we go all right all right let's see let's see what happens all right um, maybe there's the slightest amount of hope for mars however this has been fucking dangerous platforming because we're, we're this far in and he's been soft most of the time and anytime that he does double down a little bit like this she'll weasel out of it and then he'll just allow it so all right if I didn't know anything about gay people and I watched that, I'd be like, oh, okay, so LGBT people, they just can't but, stay in a healthy relationship. They're just, you know, chasing something. Like, to me, okay. that's where I'm like... I'm glad that he recognizes the problem with that, the harm that that would cause. I am glad that Mars can see this. How does it, like, why is it necessary to, to say something like that in a way where it makes it seem like it's the case for everybody? But let me ask you this. You, you've been part of the gay community for a long time as well, right? Sort of, yeah. Do, I don't, I, I don't, so, I've never really, like, I don't get really immersed in it a whole lot. So, I mean, I know okay, as much well, as I can, I, though, I guess. I was know? Honestly, neither do I. Like, besides the YouTube shit that I do, I mean, I'm not real involved with the LGBT community, but I know a lot of LGBT folk. And I know some that are fucking annoying and, you know, not helpful. And I know some that are really chill, cool people. So, you know, it's... You can't paint the brush so broad. It was very amazing, and that's what I saw. So I'm just mm -hmm. sharing what I saw. I'm not lying. I'm not. I'm just like what I saw, and many people that I've interviewed, mm -hmm. same thing. I mean, they 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 report the same thing. Not but to say that people every, that every single person in the gay community okay. is promiscuous, but a very large percentage. Mm -hmm. what, what you see go go on in, in gay prides. I mean, every time I would go to gay pride. Mm -hmm. It'd be like, I felt like I had to wear um, an armor because all the guys wanted to grope, grope me and touch me. And it's like, yo, yeah. you know, do I have a sign that says touch me? I think sometimes gay pride can get a little bit out of hand. It can be a little bit too far, especially because like there'd be children at gay pride, but then there'll be like a lot of sexual shit going on. And honestly, for optics reasons, like if we want to show people that being LGBT isn't inherently like a sexual or sexualized thing, that it's not a fucking fetish or whatever, then maybe we should tone that shit down a little bit. But at the end of the day, I think the reason that it happens is because people have felt like they had to hide for so long that pride, they feel like they can be out and really express and be very in your face with your sexuality. Me personally, I don't like that. I don't think that's helpful, but I do understand both sides of it. I know where they're coming from. You know, mm -hmm. and it's it's like I I, I was put off, and yeah, it was no, always I, the same same mm -hmm. thing. Now, I'm not lying; I'm just sharing information. But and yeah, I, I do you not see from my point of view how if I didn't know anything about gay people and I just caught that bit, don't you? Okay, look at that. Okay, like I said, I get props where props is due. And Mars did not let her weasel this time. He reinstated like okay well do you see what i'm trying to say like if i'm not if i know, i don't know shit about gay people and i hear this i'm gonna think this and that's problematic right you see how it makes it f seem as though you're framing it like this is what lgbt people are which i mean a lot of straight people are promiscuous and chasing oh, yeah. relationships so so that's where i, I just kind of want you to put yourself in a position of if somebody didn't know anything about lgbt people and they catch mm -hmm. that now they think that well lgbt people are just they're just, you know, out there just hooking up all the time. Nobody's in a normal relationship. I'm not saying that no one's in a normal relationship, but a big majority of people in the LGBT. And we need to be honest, seriously. I'm, I know mm -hmm. that like 
you know how families they don't like to share the secret or they have that weird uncle that no one wants to talk about because whatever but i think it's important right away we can see that I don't know if he realizes to the full extent of which this is an agenda, this is a narrative that Maritza is trying to push, but he is trying to call her out and he did double down and reinstate his question, but we can see right now that she is squirming, that she is trying to work her way and dance her way around this shit. She's not directly responding to that, and you know, you see the gears turning, so... I want to see how he then forever responds to this. Important for us to be open. And that's one of the things about me. I'm too mm -hmm. honest and I'm too open and that gets me into trouble. And I think mm -hmm. we need to educate ourselves with facts, not try to hide that crazy uncle under a, a rug and say, oh yeah, he's just crazy uncle. Mm -hmm. you know, don't pay attention to that. But we need to understand what we are allowing our children to enter. Okay, what are you talking about? The question was about, like, do you see that the, your rhetoric, the way that you say shit, if you didn't know shit about gay people, you'd think being gay is a bad thing. And now you're going on talking about how, well, we need to educate people about their crazy uncle. What about what you said, bitch? Like, what? You know, it's like the same thing when you speak up against the trancing of what happens and, and, and these radical trans people, you know. It More agenda shit more more pushing uh yeah like like we see what happened like what are you talking about this has nothing to do with what mars said to you weasel ass bitch it's important to say yeah because so, i'm sure people have told you yeah. mars why are you talking i mean i remember telling you that mars why are you doing that why are you putting trans people under the bus mm -hmm. yeah Isn't so like the same? no not really no it's not really the same i mean i could agree that uh Okay, for example, there are there are things that happen in the LGBT uh, nowadays anyways that it I don't understand Mars like strong willingness to continue to try to appeal to this person. I don't know if Mars is the type of person where he has to feel liked or he tries to avoid confrontation, but why are you searching for something to agree with? She just weaseled out of your question that was actually a good question, you know? I don't I don't get it. It's it's a little much and we should discuss it and expose it for sure, but I still can't agree that it is necessary to be on some YouTube channel and be like, yeah, and LGBT people, they just chase. Because to me, that that was you projecting. That sounded like your experience. Exactly. That is her projecting. And thank you, Mars, for saying that. However, you didn't need a fucking like appeal to her. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But but it wasn't that, just my experience. It's what I saw. Like, I, yeah. an example. An that's your experience, bitch. What the fuck is you saying? Example I'm going to give you. I, I roommate. I don't doubt it, though. Like, yeah, I'm not I trying to argue I, that you didn't see it. Okay. I, I, not tell her. Tell her. No, this is not what we're talking about. Answer the question. Can I give you an example? You can I was finish, sorry. Yeah. I was just I was, um, I was living with a or rooming roommate of mm -hmm. a, in a gay, with a gay guy and renting a room. And he had three or four guys come in in a day. Hookups. I had a move. I'm like, I don't, I don't feel safe here. It's like, what if he bring some mass murder that he found online and he, he yeah. Now he's allowing her to just run wild and continue telling stories that paint LGBT people in a negative light and then frame it as a reasoning for you to believe something bad about LGBT people. This is a weasel. This is what a weasel does. This is someone who has a narrative that they have to tell that has beliefs they have to reinforce, but they realize what the audience is here. They realize who they're talking to, but he doesn't realize what's happening. You have to catch this, Mars. If you want to have a platform, if you want to have people on your show and platform them, you have to do it responsibly. This is a, a great example of irresponsible platforming. You know, so, and like that, I have, tons of stories that I could share because I've been in the community for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Way before I even trans, because I was a lesbian for 22 years. So I know yeah. what I saw and, and I'm just, I'm just, as a matter of fact, sharing, you know, the information and, and the fact. Once again, I don't know how many times I have to reinstate this. Go to this fucking person's channel, watch their fucking videos, listen to what they say, it's not. You're lying. You're saying this shit because you're coming on Mars' as shit. You're, you're saying something about an entire group. You're not just telling your story. Stop trying to say this shit. 
anyone who cares to actually look at the evidence to actually see what's happening will fucking know. They'll know. And I and believe me, if you don't want to fucking do this, I've, I understand. This person is a lot to deal with. But I've been watching them for a good two or so months now just to get an idea of what's going on. I just watch every video that they put out. And I study, you know, and that's why I can combat what they're doing. That's why the veil is completely removed for me. I see completely beyond this person. I have knowledge to do that. Knowledge is power. Educate yourselves. Get in there. Study things. The fact that the reason I'm sharing that is because I don't believe that they're happy. Because if you have to go from, and not to say everyone, I know there are people okay. that have lived together yeah. for 20 something years and they're in love still, whatever. But those are the exception to the rules. You're talking in about, my opinion, you don't believe like uh, LGBT people in relationships are happy. Is that where you're? I, well, shit, it's been over two years for me, like two and a half years, and fuck, I'm happy. I think that's that's not a true. I mean, and what why, I witnessed, what I witnessed, okay. there were people just going from relationship to relationship to relationship. I mean, I've seen that with straight people too. So yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. I would but, absolutely. I, good point, Mario. I 100% agree that somebody who constantly goes from one person to another is probably chasing something and not happy but exactly yeah, yeah. but uh, and that's I a lot think, with people yeah. in the world in general in you the know, world just, I, I can agree with that too that. In, yeah yeah look she's even talking over him he's the fucking host of the show he's the goddamn host and now she's talking over him because he's fucking being he's you know he's saying it a little bit he's seeing what she's doing a little bit he's peeping it all right 100 yeah in the world um yeah but that was, I just brought that up because I thought that was really uh, interesting because he talked about that and then he talked about- You let her weasel away. All right, so let's see what you say here. But just to let you know, Mars, she never answered your question and then you moved on. Uh, uh, what is normal or what is abnormal? Um, but so could we kind of discuss then sexual orientation just a little bit? Like, because you, you definitely seem like you, you were saying like sexual orientation is something that you know it is it's your environment that basically influences your sexual orientation so i'm just curious how you see your sexual orientation do you believe that it was the environment and and it, does this also go for heterosexuals or is it just homosexuals i think the sexual um atmosphere this day and age is very messed up because people don't a lot of people don't have boundaries they don't they're not raised in a way to respect the fact that you should probably wait to get married instead of having a bunch of partners and spreading diseases and and then not not just lgbt everyone in general we haven't been taught to like wait for that perfect person you know that you're totally compatible instead of just jumping into relationship after relationship because it hurts us as individuals mm -hmm. in my opinion like right now how i identify Pretty much will probably be asexual. I'm not, you know, after all the experiences that I've had throughout the years, I'm really not interested. But if I were to have a partner in life again, it would definitely be a guy. I, w I would not date women. I would not go out with women. Me personally. Can you imagine them with a dude? I don't know. Shot couldn't say it. Because mm -hmm. I know that that never really made me happy. It never did. Okay. So. Do you, do you feel like you have to? Um, identify your sexual orientation as something no. or no I don't because at this moment I'm not really interested in in anyone right now mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of growth a lot of healing a lot of uh, studying and learning and and just spending time with myself which is something I never did mm -hmm. growing up because I always felt like you had to have somebody in your life you always you know it was one of those things you always felt that you have to have a relationship to complete you I find now yeah. that I don't need that to be completed Okay, so what uh, part does spirituality for you play today in your detransition? Because I, I bring this up because it is a big part of your detransition, it seems, almost all the time. Uh, you seem a little bit more spiritual when you detransition. Um, so, I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, i just like to hear your take on why do you think it is that when you no. detransition, you become more spiritual? I actually, um, back in 2008 was the time real quick um before they get into why they uh do this i do want to say that me personally i think it's because they're scared because 
I've talked to them as Mark. As you know, they've interviewed me with their uh, ex. That video is no longer on their channel because they took down every video that they did with their ex. Apparently, their ex did request that. I'm not sure, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyways. What the fuck was I saying? I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so I think this person's fucking scared because they were talking to me about how um, they were so terrified of that they were going to go to hell and that how harmful the Christian community is to trans people, that it makes trans people scared and everything. Um, they were saying a lot of that shit, and it definitely seems like they're getting a little bit older. You know, they're getting up there in age a little bit closer to death. And they're scared, and it seems like that's what's happening here. It seems like a midlife crisis, and they're because why else would a person go from being trans to detransitioning to transitioning again to detransitioning? You know what I mean? And flip flop their views radically. Why would they go from hating Christians to hating trans people like that? It definitely seems like it's fear. It's that propaganda that if you're gay, if you're LGBT, you're gonna go to hell. It seems like that shit is getting to them. But let's see what they have to say when I really started getting really spiritual and I was still identifying as Mark and I went on a spiritual journey and I was really trying to to find my spiritual path um, yeah so I've had both and, and again it's it's you know yeah and that Mac Wells just like he, he's such, he's such I'm gonna read I'm, I'm gonna read a little bit of the comments probably not all of them I'll, I'll do it later I'm trying to yeah put, no but he's a character he's like he's a little character yeah I'm, I'm not gonna say. if you're if I'm not going to read the comments that are just taking personal shots. So if you guys have yeah. questions, that's fine. But uh, anything else, I'm going to just ignore, okay? I already yeah. I already responded to whether or not uh, Maritza was vicious in the past, and I think that, that, that was enough. So questions will be... Did you, though? Because what I saw is you called her out and then let her weasel out, and then you accepted that. This is harmful platforming. I'll keep saying that. Accepted before we wrap up, but otherwise, I'm not going to read it. Sorry. Uh, the go on what were we saying i'm sorry uh, we're talking about uh, being spiritual and how oh yeah you're, that i've yeah. been spiritual it's both mm -hmm. actually when um back in 2008 you know the i started looking into christianity um because of my ex they're the ones that brought me to christ hmm. but prior to that i was all into the buddhist hinduism um you name it indian yeah. type of you know um indigenous type of culture and what they believed in. I was always a truth seeker. Yeah. Okay. So I guess um, in regards to your transition, um, another thing I, I wanted to discuss a little bit was like, how does that impact? Because every time you detransition and transition, right? Like you've had a hysterectomy and, and um, probably something else I'm forgetting. Top surgery. Top surgery. Okay. But so in regards to your, like the hormone changes and stuff, in case anybody's curious, like, what does that do to you every time you detransition versus transition? Like, I'm more uh, curious mentally. Like, wh what does that? Where do you where do you see that it impacts you, or not? When I stop taking tea, I become more focused. I I've done a lot of research regarding, and I've yeah, heard we can't just try to silence one side and allow the other side to speak. The mm -hmm. other side that doesn't want my Let's side get to, to speak is judging get to the what our problems, that kind of thing. Okay. All right, here. Sounds good. Um, so we're getting close to wrapping it up. So now I'm going to read some of these questions uh, and then we'll, we'll close it out. So I'll read some of these questions and comments. Uh, Melissa said, why can't you just express both femininity and masculinity without transitioning? Most people don't feel 100% feminine or 100% masculine. We are all somewhere in between. Um, I agree and with I that agree. statement. I um, agree with that. Do you think that impacted um, I mean, I your reasons too. behind transitioning? Look, that's three people, radically different views, the radically different people, and we agree with that. However, um, people that will take that and use it to mean something is not, uh, I have a problem with that. At all? Yeah, I think so, because I was told all the time that being masculine was bad, even though I would go back and forth from feminine to masculine. So uh, when I started mm -hmm. bodybuilding and I started taking stuff, I started really mas masculinizing testosterone i don't I, at my age i think if i were if i were to take estrogen it'd be a lot more harmful because god wow someone that loves mars excited to see where it's from the oh god you people don't see this agenda she pushing i just want to see these comments uh a a uh, HSS Maritza ever explored that both mark and Maritza are two sided two sides of one coin that is her whole self some people experience gender identity switching 
I, I mean, like I mentioned in the beginning of the show, I've always had the ability to go into being feminine or being masculine, even mm -hmm. when I had relationships. Um, all right. This but yeah, when, when I was butchy, men used mm -hmm. to love that. When I before I mm -hmm. ventured into any other transitioning stuff, heterosexual guys used to love that about me. Interesting. That, <laughs> I'm just trying to see if there's anything good. Yeah, I mean, I know. I know so you I, don't agree with Yeah, that. I was going to say, we'll, we'll wrap it up. All right, uh, Tiffany so, asked, sorry. Yeah, Park Road, I'm sorry that you feel that I'm a, P a POS, but you don't know me in order to... I, wait, what was that? Let me hear that. They ain't mad about that shit. ...changed when I started dating trans women. Right, so it sounds like you're saying that... Oh, oh, let's hear this part. This is how a problem on it. ...women anymore. And yet, I lived as a lesbian for 22 years. So I guess my sexual orientation changed because oh, somebody going to tell me that I wasn't a lesbian for 22 years and I was living with women. I mean, I had long-term relationships with women anywhere from two years to anywhere from six years. Dude, and so it sounds like you're saying that trans women are the gateway to like heterosexuality or something. Because <laughs> it was like, mm. it was like, and I guess because of the molestation, having such a brutal father that I really got turned mm. off by men. But all that changed when I started dating trans trans women. Yes, I I went over this in the the video that's already on my channel. Oh my god, the video that I put up on my channel the other day uh, about Maritza Cummings. Yeah, they were basically talking about how um they knew what men were like from dating trans women. So now they're trying to say that they've been afraid of men, but now that they dated trans women, they think they can date men. Like this just is hella transphobic. Okay, so are you saying that trans women are like the, or are you are you saying? I'm that not trans saying anything. I'm not. I'm not gonna put my foot in. No, my no, I'm not I, saying well, anything. I'm just no, saying I mean, that. Yeah, you're not saying anything here, bitch. But you're gonna push your agenda on your channel. Yeah, yeah. that changed when I started dating trans women. Right. So it sounds like you're saying that trans women are the gateway to like heterosexuality or something. Yes, sir. Yes, we are. Girl, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know what the reason was. Okay, that's that's enough of this fucking shit. I cannot take Mars ass anymore. Let me just see the comments. I really admire you as an interviewer. Not an easy interview. You rock. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't value Mars as an interviewer because Mars platformed a dangerous person and allowed them to weasel out of shit, which is why I don't. I've seen a few of your videos and I'm real impressed how respectfully and honest you discuss this. Who the fuck are these people that watch Mars? Like, these people, I, they just can't recognize, like, how harmful this shit actually is. So, yeah, um, it was good. Why? Wait, all right, so you people think that when a weasel is being a weasel and a fucking a cuck is being cucked and being respectful and allowing the person to come in here and have control on their show, on their platform. You think that's being a good interviewer because of what? Because of what? Good to see you here, Maritza. Oh my God. This is a supporter of, Oh my, see, look at this shit. Harmful platforming. I hope everything in this video has shown you that this is harmful platforming and that Mars has made a mistake here. This is irresponsible that doing this and allowing this person to weasel out and tone down their accusations against the trans community and just push their fucking narrative, but in a slightly less obvious way, this is harmful and this isn't okay. This is irresponsible platforming.